I greet you once more in the name of our Lord and personal Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to thank God for um, such beautiful music. And I've always told people that I actually also can sing. <laughs> what are you guys trying to say about me? Why are you laughing? Like, I actually can sing. Um, well, certain things happened in my life. Um, then I had to pick one. So I stuck to the Bible and the Bible alone, shouting at people, sola scriptura and nothing else. Yeah. So I was saying to my head elder over here, I'm actually shocked that this is what they do when they are not at my church. Uh, no, but it's fine. It's okay. Elder and say it's all right. I, I didn't know. Now, now I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we're just going to have a text and we pass. You know what the best pass is for, is it? Just to give you something that you're going to use in the course of the week, which will be useful for you throughout the whole week. So turn with me to the book of Exodus, the Exodus of the children of Israel. The Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter... Um, 3 verse 14. You know the book of Exodus is just a historical textbook, isn't it? It's more like making his people making history. We are being taught the history, the movement of the Ndevele from, where did they come from? Yeah, KZN down to Zimbabwe, I mean via whichever part and wherever they went to. But all I'm trying to say is the book of Exodus is just a historical textbook. That carries the story of the children of Israel. So what is it that I want to give you here? I want to give you the genesis of the story. Where it's starting from Moses meets the burning bush but not being consumed. And as he meets the burning bush not being consumed, you know the story. Gets closer, removes his sandals, and then God begins to speak to him. Instruction coming from God is God is sending Moses to go to Egypt where he ran away from. You know the story, isn't it? He was a man that was being sought for. So he was an exile in Midian where he had to marry the daughter of his cousin brother Jethro. Now, he is with God and God is saying to him, you ought to go to Egypt and bring my children back. Where he knew he had left also his relatives over them. And, and Moses cannot fathom, cannot understand what God is trying to do, you know. It's like God is sending him back to Zimbabwe when he had found some peace in the UK or uh, Dubai or something like that. You understand? And, and God is saying, no, go back, my guy. You have to go back to Zimbabwe. And Moses is saying, but how, how do I begin to do this? You understand the conversation of Moses? He has five defense lines. He says, no, but who am I to go? He says, who am I? God says, I will be with you. It's like God is not responding to the questions Moses is giving. So, who am I? I will be with you. And then he asks the pertinent or important question, which is where I want to be right now, and we pray and go. Is that okay? So we are on, on, on verse 13 and, and 14. And Moses, then Moses said to God, I'm reading verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God, now listen, listen careful. The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? I have a question. You guys understand English, eh? Simple English as it is. What has Moses done in verse 18? He says, if I come to them and say to them, the God of your father, he even gives the name of God and qualifies whose father he is. And then goes ahead to ask the God, who shall I say to them that you are? Are you understanding the irony here? That Moses is asking for a name that he has already given. He just didn't give the name, but he gave the name and the backup statement that qualifies that he is not just a God, but the God of their fathers. Because the Jewish people understood more, not their God, but the God of their fathers. 
who had been silent for over 400 years while they were in captivity in Egypt. So they had no personal relationship with this particular God. So he remained the God of their fathers. So Moses knew the kind of man he is talking about. Are, are we moving together? So he speaks to them and, and, and he is asking the God and he says, you see, this is not where the sermon is, but I'm seeing things in there already. So he says to them, uh, the God of your fathers, uh, what's that? he's asking the God. I will tell them, the God of your father has sent me. And they will say to me, what is his name? I want you to understand that Moses at this particular time, he is not in any physical realm, but he is in the spiritual realm. So he is speaking and questioning spiritual things. Are we moving together? Yeah. I want you to help you and I want to help you understand what Moses is questioning. Moses is questioning certain things to God. He says, I met that someone in Egypt, and you are saying to me, Go back to Egypt. Now when I get there, Pharaoh will ask, my guy, where are you getting the cut of murdering one of my own, knowing for 40 years that I'm looking for you, and then you come straight into my palace and demand that I release the people who has sent you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Moses understood who Pharaoh was. Remember, the Pharaoh at the time was taken to be as a god. Hence, the now river at the time was a place of worship. Those who did mathematics or engineering, you'll understand that geometry and uh, trigonometry all began and started in Egypt when they were dividing for one another the pieces of land to use next to the now river because the now river was their god of fertility and pharaoh was the supreme god now then then the god responds which is which is carry this and you're fine all right so the god responds in verse 14 and god said to moses now, God is now giving Moses the name that Moses is looking for. Remember, Moses has a history with this God, but a history he does not know, a history he was told. You didn't get that. Yeah. You are aware Moses was not seeing himself in the basket. He wasn't seeing himself in the basket. So there is someone back in Egypt who has the testimony and the story of Moses yeah. that God preserved your life. When other sons were being murdered, your mother put you in a basket and the basket didn't sink, my guy. You were safe. Not only did you become safe, but when the daughter of Pharaoh saw you, she loved you yeah. and made you her own child. Are we moving together? So Moses has the knowledge of this God that was. And what the God managed to do for him then. What he needs now is an affirmation of what the was God is able to do in the now and able to do in the to be. So then God responds and says to Moses, go to them and tell them that I am who I am has sent me. I am who I am has sent me. So let's get into a very small class. So that great of people is ever don't come back here, you will have this experience. So he says, I am. Now I am is um, um, taken from the Hebrew word hoyo. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but hoyo in itself is not a complete word. It is a word that is born from the word ehya. Now, now this is what I want you to hold. So it comes from the word e. Eh, Ehia. Now, Ehia is a word that we say it is in imperfect tense English majors. When someone says to you, Ehia, you can interpret what they have said to be in the past or in the present or in the future. Imperfect tense. I'll move it together. So, who is simply Asa in, in Hebrew? I'll move it together. 
So now God says to Moses, Ehye, Asa, Ehye. When God says that, Moses like, it's done, I'm going. I'm going to Egypt. Let me help you understand yeah. what Moses yeah. was celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to carry this as you enter into the week and as you continue with your life forever. Oh, yeah. God says to Moses, Ehye, Asa, Ehye. Now, the moment God said, Ehye, Asa, Ehye, Moses in his head had numerous things. The first thing that Moses heard was God said to him, so a yen can be translated in the present, I am. It can be translated in the past, I was. It can be translated in the future, I will be. So when God said a year, I saw a year of previous, God, Moses heard him saying, I am who I am. I was who I was. And I will be who I will be. Moses Ndovati Shushakwan. So the things are enough. I am set. Now let me help you, friends, to see what Moses has seen. Moses has heard God saying to him, You understand the protection that I gave you when you could not see. I was who I was in the time when you were on the now river. So the I was that I was shall be that which I will be whenever the time comes. Now quickly run into the journey and the trip when they are now on their way to the promised land. First point of call, they meet up with the Red Sea. Moses is stuck. People are crying. Why did you bring us here? And Moses says, relax, my guys. I have a here. I saw a here. He ought to be something on this particular day. Turns to God, says the people are making noise now. Begin to deal with them. And the I am a here. I saw a here. He became that which he will become and became the dry ground that they began to walk on. Are you understanding the concept? Yes. But you see, the dry ground needs those who know where the dry ground is coming from. Yeah. Because those who did not know where the dry ground came from and they, when they walked on it, the dry ground consumed them. So this one is just for young people that please, don't love enjoying and eating things that you don't know where they're coming from. Because they are only meant, they are possibly blessings for those that they've been blessed for. Amen. So they continue on their path. They find themselves in mud. Are we moving together? They find themselves in Mara, the bitter waters of Mara. The waters are so bitter. Initially, now you see, I want you to understand how God works. The things, the obstacles they are meeting are not just obstacles, but they are calculated obstacles to expose the ability and power of God and define his name. Initially, they meet up with a lot of water that they did not know what to do with it. And I will be a year as a year. He became the dry ground where there was too much water. Now they are in Mara. There is little water, but the water is bitter. So the a year needs to become something else. And he becomes the leaf. You remember what he says to Moses. Take a leaf and throw it into the waters. And then the water became sweet. So he became the leaf that sweetened the waters. The a year as a year can be that which you desire him to be. Some days later on the line, they came across the waterless Repidim. Remember the story? They come across Repidim, and now in Repidim, there is no water at all. And there is no water, he says, no, I'm, I'm going to be two things at once. He becomes the rock, and then becomes the water that comes out of the rock. Then they drank and continued with their work. Now, dear friends, this is all I'm saying to you this evening. As you are going to begin this week, you need a here, a sir, a here in your life. Who will become that which he will become when he is meant to be. Huh? Yeah. We always sing and we say, we have the balm in Gilead. Yeah. He becomes the balm in Gilead when we want to be healed. We always sing and we say, he is the sweetest water ever that we need. I mean, the streams of life. And we beca he becomes the water whenever we want the water. He is the life eternal defined in itself. So he becomes that to us. So if you are ill, remember what he said in the morning. He becomes the greatest physician according to the book of Luke. You need things that are fast, go into Mark, you will find him as an immediate God. You need the God of love. You are hungry and thirsty for love, my elder. She is not giving enough. You know a year of that. 
is able to do that for you. Find him in the book of John. He will give you these things for free without charging you anything. Jump over into the book of Acts. You find that he has the sweetest name that can be given to any mankind. You have everything in this world that we are talking about. Are you guys listening to me? You see, he becomes the thing. You see, in him, we find the... the We find in this man the lamb, the lion, the king in one man. That was a beautiful song, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the way you guys are laughing, it says, I know you don't listen to the songs on Sabbath. It's understandable, but during the week we do these things, right? We do them all. But I hope you have understood what I've said here. In Him, we find everything that we desire. So as you enter into the week, what is better off? To seek one thing or to seek the one who is all in one? You are better off seeking the one who is all in one. So that when you have Him, you know you have a complete set. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being carried away, you know, to talk to young people and say, you see, you can seek for a man who has a six, six what do you call it, six pack. You can seek for a man who has a six pack. The six pack, my guy, will not put food on the table. And the six pack will not make you happy all the time. So you are better off seeking the one. <laughs> I, I, I hope and pray. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to speak for myself and, and defend myself here. But you've heard what I've said, isn't it? That you need to have Jesus and with him on your side you are a safe human being. Numerous examples can be given in the Bible, but time doesn't allow. Remember in the boat, he needed to save them from sinking. People are hungry. He needed to change some bread. Just two and five to feed a whole lot of people. At the wedding, he needed to change water over into becoming wine. You see, so whenever he is present, that a year asa in him ensures that things happen in your life whenever they ought to happen. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Maybe we can pray together. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this Sabbath evening. And Father, we are grateful for the beautiful Sabbath that you have given unto us. We have heard you speaking to us from morning until this very hour. And it will be a shame and waste of time if we are to walk back and turn back home without hearing anything from you. And I want to pray for my dear brothers and sisters that may they at least pick something in the things that were spoken of during the day. Father, I wish to pray that amongst the many things we may seek for in our lives, may we seek that we have Jesus in our life. For when we have him, we have a complete package. We have everything in one. He is able to be that which he ought to be in our lives whenever we need him. I wish to pray for a double portion of blessings upon each individual who is here as they enter into the new week. And Father, I pray that may you become that which you are meant to be in their lives in the course of the week. Some are ill, some are broke, some are jobless, and some are just looking for companionship. May you please be those things to them so that they may not wander up and about looking for things that may satisfy self. Above all, Father, may you become that barricade that will protect us from the archers of the evil one, so that when you shall break the eastern skies, we may be able, Father, to join with the rest of the world as we humbly accept your coming. For in Jesus Christ's name, we will always pray. Amen. Amen.